The whole um, generic bodybuilder thing is, and I'm supposed to have like a massive pit bull with a, a, a huge Jeep. You know, I've got a, a VW family Tig one, and I've got a little Come Floyd on. down there. <laughs> Get up in there. Floyd is uh, quite famous, actually. I think the last time I was at the, the Arnold Classic in Ohio, like one of the judges came. I was like, "Hey, how is your dog?" That was my Spanish impression. He was a Spanish guy. Most professional bodybuilders I know have got a job. You know, I, I work the gym, that's my job. Right, let's go to work. Everybody's got this misconception that you just eat, sleep, train, uh, go in a contest, come back, eat, eat, sleep, train. It's just not like that at all. Uh, I love running my own gym. Don't get me wrong, I have days where, you know, someone's in telling you problems about his wife and his job and you're not having the best day yourself. I would like to say we're, we're a, a bodybuilding gym, a bunch of guys who, who compete. We've got a bunch of guys who come in just to keep fit or whatever. And yeah, we do have the guys who mess around a bit. That's just that's a given in every gym. I like to, to keep my circle small. And then there's certain individuals that I know pretty much within like two minutes whether I'm going to like them or not or get along with them. And uh, yeah, Leroy is one of those people who, you know, I just felt like I kind of clicked with. This is, this is my therapy, this is, this is just cutting the, cutting the hedges and it just being on my own, cutting the lawn or doing the hedges or whatever. This is the wife's area. She looks after this when they all flower. Uh, my area is the decking and the, uh, the sun lounges. Leroy is one of the few people who are left who has really got a kind of passion for the, the training. There's not many people like that anymore. I was a massive fan of bodybuilding, massive, even though I, 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 I trained myself, I was a massive fan. I, this is my pet does, my, 
I actually had a, an iguana and we, we, we called him Doz. He had his same temperament as well, grumpy fucker. That's a, that's a picture, oh, 97, that was me, my last show that was, 97. My pride and joy, believe it or not, are these two here. Now, these are the actual Olympia, Weeder Olympia medals uh, that Doz have presented me with, the Joel Weeder. Mr. Olympia, 96 and 97. They've only just been, I've, I've only just been allowed to bring them out because the wife, the wife's had a mid for years. I'm a construction manager. I've still, I've been in construction for a long time. Obviously we build things from the ground upwards. So I still keep my hand in with the training. You know, I still like to go to the gym three or four times a week. Selfish, very selfish. She had, she had a it's choice the now, see. most selfish spot I've she ever could, she, could, she could go out with a, a man. Oh, oh Jesus, this is what we're gonna get now. a pencil neck. <laughs> <laughs> I met some fantastic people, you know. I mean, Kevin Lerone, you know, Al Beckles. The, the name, you know, you know, there's God bless him. There's NASA, you know. And I, I actually got to train with some of these guys, you know, some of these lads. Seeing what state it's in nowadays, it's, 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 it is it is a bit heart wrenching, but it's happened to it's happened to the sport before on, on a few occasions, and they've managed to ride it out. I would love to be there 20, 24 7 with Anf. I would. You know, because he, he reminds me so much of the way Dorian was, his attitude, his approach to training, um, his mentality. He's like my little brother. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, I say little, no, he's not my little brother, he's my sort of younger brother. I grew up in West Rain. Um It was kind of new, like, notorious for being a little bit. A little bit rough and ready, there used to be a little bit of trouble around there and stuff. That was like when I was younger, younger, like maybe like seven, eight, nine, you know, like in the younger years. Growing up, I was quite an aggressive teenager. Not that I got into trouble with police or anything, I had nothing like, like criminal or anything, but I just had a lot of uh, had a lot of anger in there for some reason. I don't know why, just that was just the way it was. Maybe she's had super high testosterone levels. And I was just extremely bad tempered. I used to like smashing stuff and whatever. And yeah, anybody who knows me kind of, you know, I wouldn't go around beating people up or anything. I don't mean it in that way. Just, just something like getting beat on a PlayStation game. I would, ugh, that was it. You know, it's just, I don't know why. It's just, it's just hormonal, I think. So this is like the, the top end of West Rain. It's not, it's not a big place. My grandma actually lives over there. So this is kind of the middle of West Renton. This would be classed as the nice part of West Renton. And then we'll go down into the, the Beirut area where I used to live. That one there. I can't see the number. Next door to 74, 73. That's where I used to, 73 Fairview, that's where I used to live. But I, I kind of didn't get on too well with the parents and stuff and, you know, kind of caused some issues there. I was quite shy as well, you know, uh, I wasn't the most outgoing of people. You know, I'm not extremely outgoing now, but that's not because of shyness or whatever, it's just the way I am from then, you know. There you go, man, that's some true northeast shit. My mum's got horses, and she hears from people like, <laughs> rev the car next to it, like this bus driver dickhead up her arse. Giddy up. Yeah, it's definitely working class, yeah, of course, yeah. Right, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like him to come on stage and just do his pausing. He's obviously won it. So I, I can actually remember walking to the curtain and I still had my uh, trainers on. And I, I almost walked out with the trainers on. And luckily my auntie was like, you got your shoes on. Which door it is? <laughs> Hold on. Maybe this. I'll try and make this so we know where we're going. Is it this one? I don't think it's this one, James. No, it's actually further up. I always do this. 
It looks like they've changed the door. Hold on. Ah, see, man, it is the blue door. There we go. Well, right, mate, there's the boss man hiding. Is he in? No idea. Brian's a, a, he's kind of a, he used to be kind of a big influence in the Northeast. He used to run the, the NABA North Britain. You know, it was one of the biggest shows around at the time. But I used to pop down and see him and he would have a look at me and give me some diary advice and stuff. And he came down here with uh, Michael Surtees and uh, Michael brought Anthony in and he said, what do you think about this kid? So being very uh, quiet and unassuming, Anthony took his shirt off <laughs> as usual. And I looked and I says, you want to get that kid in the junior Mr. North Britain? And that was the first time I'd seen him. And from the start, you always looked at Anthony and said, God, what can he be? And look what he has. I think he used to go and see Brian on a Tuesday. For some reason, that was the only night Michael was free and he used to take me down there. And uh, it used to be ladies training night, so I would go in <laughs> with my uh, little underpants on and stuff. <laughs> All the, the ladies would be like, oh, what's, what's going on here? I remember those days, they were, they were really, really fun. You know, nowadays, don't get me wrong, I enjoy it, but the contest, the pressure's there, and it's, it's just a lot different, you know? My wife used to have a ladies' night, and that was on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And we used to, why well, he used to come down, and all the ladies used to go home and kick their husbands. <laughs> I remember you saying, right, tell us what you're eating. And at the time, I was eating, uh, I think for carbs, I was having a loaf of bread today and uh, chicken drumsticks <laughs> that, was, that, that was my diet bread chicken drumsticks and uh, savory rice I think from Aldi's yourself and me we love bodybuilding and we will go to any show we, we're not like some of these oh I'm not going to that show because that's so and so and so I go to every show that's going I enjoy it and the thing is when you get to the shows it's talking to the competitors and the guys and that's half it the life for me it is. I, I hate the, the label coach, fucking guru. Where's this guru come from? You know, how do you make yourself a guru? How do you make yourself... 99.9% of all these professional bodybuilders have got to the top, have got to the top through what they've got. Naturally, you know, they, they, their genetics, the way they train, the way they've, they've eaten over the years. And then you'll have the odd person who'll jump on the bandwagon and give a bit of advice, and because they've taken, you know, they've suddenly become a, Oh yeah, I coached him. He got there because of me. Bollocks. Just say, even when I was a kid, I had a pit round it. I did it properly. You know, I didn't really do it properly. You don't bother. You know, I had a milk round. I just, I, I wanted to be the best milkman. If somebody give me a poor car for being second, I probably wouldn't accept it, to be fair. To me, you've, you've got to win it. British, the UK British overall champion for 2012. Please step up to the rostrum. Anthony Bale! Yeah, if anybody like, kind of saw the video when I win, it's, there's not really much emotion comes out. It was just basically because I was so tired, you know, I'd, I'd done all the shows. So when, when, they, when I won, it took, like a, it took like a couple of weeks to sink in. You know, on the day I was just so exhausted, I just kind of didn't take it in. So, you know, it, it is very difficult to get a poor card in the UK. I mean, um, you basically got one chance a year to get your poor card in one person. Can I just note something there, Jim? Just, just people do take the piss out of this. Can you see the kind of exclusiveness? You've got one chance to win that a year. 
cost you two hundred dollars. Actually, you have to pay two hundred dollars to be a pro every year. You have to kind of renew it every every year. Every I can't remember now. It's every November or something like that. It's two hundred dollars for that bad boy. You can see these ones are just cardboard. <laughs> This one's actually laminated. I've got the, got the first one laminated, so my wife did that at work. Hey, 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 hey. Ah, better. Ah! Still strong, man. Three now. Again. Another one, dude. Another one. One more. We got one left. One left. That's the one. Please up, man. We're in. Dave Crawford, crazy Dave. Uh, my training partner for God. It's got to be about a million years now. He's a good training partner, man. I mean, I never ever lay, never duffs a workout. Trains hard. You see, he's a bit nuts. Give us two. Yeah. Two reps. Again! Yeah. Oh, no, I'm just touching one fucking man. Slow. Boom. Yeah. That's a one. Well, we, before we actually train, we actually know what we're going to do before we actually train. So we like just focus on our training. We, there's none of this chit chat, nothing like that. We just come in. We already know what we're going to do before we actually come in. So get your yeah. hands off the hips, man. Oh, we need two. That's a one. Ah. Again, again. Ah. Right, give us one now. Ah. Give us one. One. Ah. That's you. We're in. And he hasn't been here the last. <laughs> He's, <laughs> he, the start, last he started working away and kind of appreciate what a good training partner is when you kind of when it's gone type of thing you know you don't kind of yeah. you don't think about it when, you, when you're in the kind of after all these years and now he's yeah, kind, of, kind of gone the last year yeah I know <laughs> hard <laughs> he's always like led the way all the time and always been like been powerful and strong and I've always like looked up for him um, but we've always fed off each other he's always been a good friend he, he'll bend over back he'll do anything for you. he's always been a nice guy uh, never caused anybody he's always inspired by bodybuilding Johnny Yates and Lee Haney and Tom Pratt's all them now. So he, Hans getting away he wanted to be, and he set his goals from a very early age and he's getting away he wanted to be. Toilets. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Every time. With me, you know, I just love to train. The, the kind of physique is a byproduct of what, this is why I get, oh, why, you got, why you always got your hoodie on, Anthony? I don't feel the need to kind of display whatever all the time. That isn't really what I do it for. I like to train, I like to bodybuild, and well, everybody wants to look good. And, but I don't think you need to ram it down everybody's throat all the time, you know? In December, I had the, the kind of gymnastia surgery on the left side, and the plan was, when I spoke to the surgeon, he would said, you know, three or four weeks, you're going to be back in the gym, no problem. So that was the plan, have a little bit of rest. So January was the plan, was to start dying, I think it was the first week of January. That gave me like 20, 22 weeks to, to diet for the Malzani Pro Show. I'm trying to keep the calories high and get back stuck back into the training because we are in a place where like at 18 weeks out, I'm, I'm usually in a lot better place than this, so... So scale-wise, we've got 15 pounds to play with, but, you know, with the break from training, um, I've got about seven to 10 pounds of muscle to add on, so... You know, if we're talking body fat-wise, if you want to do all the maths, which it never ever works out like that, I've got about 25 pounds of fat to lose, and uh, about 10 pounds of tissue to gain back. So the plan was to kind of do a few shows, if we didn't win, build up some points and eventually make the Olympia in September. I'll be honest, I, I kind of planned on it being my uh, last year on stage. It 
we get together as often as possible to train. And they are good training sessions. We've never had a bad training session. It gives 110%. His logo is 100% or nothing. It gives 110% every time. Every time, every rep. You'd have a lot of guys who shy away from that because they don't like pain. You know, this, this exercise hurts. It fucking supposed to hurt. I hear guys in the middle of the world talking about like, what they're going to eat, what they're going to have after they've trained, you know, what supplements to take. All of that just does not matter. If you are not busting your ass in the gym, all of it doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's the first thing. That's it. And squeeze. Keep them coming. Yeah. Hands. Three more. And two. Take their food off the table. Come on, this is where it happens. Again. Ah, again. Come on. Dig in. Dig deep. Dig deep. Two more. Two more. Ah, oh, one more. Excellent. Good oh. Come on, here I get one. Oh. Oh. Two right hand. Two. And again. Come on, another quarter, another quarter, hold it. Oh. Come on, man. Oh. Ah. Oh. Nice. That's good. Oh. Fucking strong. Come on, strong. Oh. Yeah. Pull it. Again. Oh. Pull it. Still yet. Oh. Come on, two more. Pull. Again. Oh. Again. Oh. Come on, Dennis. Oh. Come on, raw fucking oh. pot. Still strong. Oh. Two more. Oh. Give us one. Oh. Come on, Leroy. Oh. Oh. Just oh. There's one left. This is the one. Oh. Oh. Get her in, man. Oh. Oh. Come on, man. It's what it's about. <laughs> Come on. 100%. Oh. Or nothing. <laughs> Two more. What? Yes, yeah, fucking hell. Get in there. That's a set, man. For all the, the phrases and the shouting and stuff, and those are genuine. You know, anybody else tries that, they just sound like a prat. When he's sh shouting one fucking more, he means it. And he does it because he just really wants you to get that one more. When it's time for business, it's time for business. Big fuck off cannonballs. Yeah. Eight, two, one, let's go. Let's go. And drive. Oh, oh fucking easy. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Drive! Ooh. Again! Ooh. Again! Come on, two more! Aye. Two more! Drive! One Aye. fucking more! Drive! Again! Aye. Again! Drive! Get it up! Get it up! Get it up! Yes! One more, man! Okay, let's go! Drive! You called it! Aye. Get it up! Get it up! There we go, lock it up! Okay, three, three, one, let's go! Yeah. Let's go! Come on, dig deep now! Dig fucking Aye. deep! Yeah! Try. Again! Again! Uh, One with me! Uh, Get it up! That's you! Lock! Breathe! Okay. Come on now, dig fucking deep in them trenches now. Come on, pull it out! Three, two, one! Yeah. Nasty time! Let's go! Right! 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 Get up! Again! Again! Come on, again! Fucking four, uh, let's go! Uh, Again! One more! Yes! Fuck! Fucking excellent. Good fucking set. Ah, oh, let's see it. Ah, fuck off, come on. Easy. Fire, boom! Still there, man, halfway. Come on, three good ones. Two! Come on, Leroy, arms a bit straight, come on. Two more, oh. fuck them up! Again! Oh. Come on, we've got oh. one last movement, Leroy, go! Oh. That's you. <laughs> Squeeze, that's it. Fucking rock hard, horseshoe there. Squeeze <laughs> it, side tricep. Right. Hang into the back, come on! Oh. Ah, show them! <laughs> yep. And push! Right. That's it! Still oh. there, man, still there! Still oh. left the time! Go! Three! Oh. Two! Oh. Don't slow on this one! 
Keep going, Leroy. Numbers don't matter. Oh. Keep going. Oh. Five now. Five. Oh. 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 Three. Oh. Numbers two, man. Oh. Come on, squeeze this last one. Oh. Oh. These are the ones. Oh. Hang into the back. Oh. Come on, get them up. Oh. Fucking show them. Oh. That's oh. it. Come oh. on, bring the hurt. Bring it! That's it. Toes on the way down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> fucking hell. Sorry about the fucking noise, Mum. Okay, here we go. January 1st, 2016. Just wanted to get a quick vlog, video, blog, whatever you want to call them. And I don't usually do them, so I don't know what you call them. Um, just to get some something to start the year off with and possibly something to look back on and reflect on. I've had like four, almost five weeks out of the gym now. But I'll be starting on Monday regardless. Obviously very light, taking it steady. And hopefully from the from the 16 weeks out mark, we can really start pushing it and uh, transform myself from looking kind of like a competitive fat swimmer into a bodybuilder again. It was Christmas time, me and Dorian like, exchange Merry Christmas like you do on your know, text message or whatever. And uh, he said, listen, you know, I've got a gym opening. Well, do, you, do you want to come to the, the grand opening? Which, you know, I was, I was very honoured to, to be invited. So we travelled over there. Dorian Yates is the guy who I had on <laughs> posters on my wall from like as a teenager, like 17 years old. It seems very surreal that you know this is the guy who I had on my wall as a teenager, and now we're out here in Marbella going to his gym opening all these years later. It's well known for being the guy who trained in a little scruffy backstreet gym in England, Birmingham, uh, and he went on to win the Mr. Olympia title six years in a row which is the, the most prestigious bodybuilding title you can, you can gain. It was unknown for some guy from England to win the, the Mr. Olympia. It was always some guy from the States who trained at Gold's Gym or whatever, so. Yeah. And he was, he was well known for his kind of extreme dedication and, and work ethic and intensity, you know. said I would go back and, and train at a later date when everything had calmed down and everything wasn't so busy. It's, you're talking about a guy who I used to have pictures on my uh, bedroom wall. And I'm not going to say, oh, I'll check the diet you're doing, we'll, we'll see what happens. You know, if, it, if he says we're, we're going to do a leg or I'm there, you know what I mean? I look forward to see, uh, see you and meet you over the coming months. And uh, once again, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dorian Yates. We're in Temple Passage on our way down to Temple Gym there. This, obviously, the mecca of all gyms, um, especially in England, it was run and owned by Dorian Yates, uh, six-time Mr. Olympia, and it was a home for us. 
people just living the next street away wouldn't know this gym was there. You used to have people come from all around the world and they'd find it within, within minutes. And you, I could stand out there and ask anybody where Mr Olympia's gym was, Dorian Yates, and they wouldn't have a clue, which was sad. Now, unfortunately, they've actually closed it down. It's been closed. It's been closed for a few months now. It's a shame. It's, it's, it's a massive shame. Temple Gym was like, it was totally hardcore. Like, when you talk about hardcore gyms, that would be the first gym that would pop into my mind is Temple. There was nobody in there taking selfies and, you know, looking in the mirror and stuff, and they were just in there to train. I mean, it is definitely a sign of the times. I mean, nobody kind of wants to be a bodybuilder anymore. They just want to be a, a physique guy or a, you know, a bikini competitor. And, you know, I don't want to sound like a dinosaur, but I just, I'm passionate about bodybuilding. You know, nothing against these other kind of classes or, or, or federations or anything. It's just, it's just my thing. So, back at, back in the nineties, the bodybuilding world was a small community, a small community, and everybody knew each other. Today. I kind of feel sorry for the bodybuilders. In fact, I, I do. I mean, I walked around the, the Body Power last year and I was so disheartened for them because, I, you know, you got, you, got, you got these big professional bodybuilders walking around and training their asses off, making massive sacrifices, and nobody's giving them the time of day. We're at Hortonley Spring now, and this is where Flexit used to be. Um, this was like the first real gym that I trained at. I remember I spoke to Brian, he said I used to, I came down with Michael. It was Michael who used to own this gym. So as you can see, it isn't a gym anymore, it is Skylight Systems. There was a, um, a travel agent underneath. So every time somebody would drop a dumbbell or a, do some deadlifts, the phone would go like, can you keep the fucking noise down up there? But it was, that gym was the coolest gym ever I've ever trained at in my life. It was like, because everything was steel and concrete. They used to have a little, used to have like a kind of a, actually behind here there'll be a little, you can see in there actually, I'm gonna get wrong for burgling the place, but there's like a little kind of concave and you would come outside to like warm up. <laughs> you would come outside to, it was actually warmer outside than it was in the gym. Like your hands practically used to stick on the bars in the winter. The bodybuilding gyms, you know, they're struggling um, with the, the big chains and stuff, taking everybody for £10 a month. So this is where the, the proper bodybuilding started. And from here, I went down to see Brian. You know, he said, you know, you've got some potential to do well in the show. Because that's what happened back then. You didn't like, nowadays, kind of, you got young guys who like decide that they're ready to, to go on stage or whatever. Back then, it tended to be like someone kind of picked you to one side and said, oh, you know, do you, have you thought about doing a bodybuilding contest? And that, well, that was how it used to be back then. You got this skinny ass pencil neck walking around in lycra shorts and a fucking vest. It's fucking, it was born with that body who posts crap on, on, on the media. And, it, uh, and it, we've got that many gullible people that, that, that they sort of buy into it. And they're getting the attention. I'm hoping in the next year or two, we're going to see a little bit of a shift in bodybuilding's kind of kind of going to come back around again, so we'll see, you know. When, you, when I don't know how I'm felt, whenever I turn up here and I got to these doors, the nervousness, excitement, bum twitching, all started all together, because you knew what was coming. Uh, and sometimes you'd get to the top of these stairs and you could hear it, fucking massive gremlins down there, all training and eating each other. It, 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 it is sad to see it locked up like this. See this here, look, as well? That's when we've been bricked up now. That used to be, that used to be open. That used to be our extraction. <laughs> yeah, there's no fucking extraction in there. At that time, I realised that the, after the surgery, there was, there was still a lump there. If not, the, the lump was larger than the, the lump that was taken away. But the surgeon had told me, you know, don't worry about it, it'll clear. It's just um, hematoma tissue. It will dissipate on its own. It won't require any further surgery. You know, and the leaner and leaner I got, I began to realise that you know that wasn't going to be the case. I've had some some more news on the the chest as well, actually, yesterday the other day before, which isn't very good. Great. We've been having ultrasound on there, and it is breaking down, just very very slowly. You know, at this point, you know, it pains me to say, but it ain't looking good. 
sometimes I do sit and think, you know, should, should we just stop? Are you being a bit stupid? And, you know, I did literally want to, on Monday night, I was like, fuck this. Monday's just gone? Yeah. So like, just because of the peck or because of other, other things too? <sighs> Mainly because of the peck. You know, it's, it's not kind of healing how it should. But again, I'm being very impatient. It's just typical me, you know, I was told by the surgeon two, three months, and I'm obviously wanted it to be, you know, it's, uh, bodybuilding's a, a physical sport. You don't want anything to look. This is the whole reason why I had the surgery done. So we'll just see how it goes. We'll keep our heads down and keep pushing and see how it goes. I've known Anth for 20 years plus, and he used to babysit me. I sold my car to do the first night of the Champions, and um, Anth sponsored me out of the blue, and I used to come up and have workouts with them. And they looked after me, they used to look after me like I was a little black baby left on the doorstep. Ah, oh, it's good. good. Working. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Hold, good. Oh. Squeeze the back, squeeze the back. Oh. Oh! Hold it there, hold! Hold! Yep. Slow, 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 slow. Dorian Yates, he changed it into a different ball game. Then you had Ronnie come along and change it, uh, set the pole even higher. And then it started dropping after that. It's not the same, it's not. They've lost that granny look. Do you know what I mean? Go strong! Ooh. Let's have two, come on, pull! Again! Uh. Oh, do it again! Three. Yeah, let's go one more. Let's do one more. Pull. Get it back. It's there, man. Hold it. Hold it. And <sighs> they wanted a different change, and they brought all the is it bikini boys, I call them, or whatever. They, they brought all the, those lads in. So they've got a change. So keep the heavy duty, hardcore, as it is. Come on, Bales. Let's have it. Come on, big freaking hanging. The seat oh, on. I'm in, yep. in, in. Yep. yep. Let's go. Nice and easy. Feel the first one. That's it. Yep. There's one. That's better. Good. Pull. There's two. Good. Ah, pull it. There's good. three. Come on, these are good. These are sweet. Yes, bring it side. Let's go again. Two more, and two on. more. Let's go. Bring it in. Come on, Lyles. One more, one, one more, one more, one more. One, more. one fucking more. Get, Get it. it in. Get it in! Get it! Hold it! Hold, 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 and hold! Up. Full stretch, get a stretch. You can tell folks to train hardcore, but it's different when... You can tell them to do it, they'll say, yeah, I've done it, but when they're standing there training with you, it's a different ball game. They're not training hardcore. They think they're training hardcore. It ain't hardcore at all. Come on, Mr. Bales. Come on, lock and load. Come on, that's it. On the other back. Let's go. Hot. Yeah! Ooh. Oh yeah, Good. roll the ball. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. And two. Ooh. Ooh. Easy. Huh? Yeah. Okay, one more. Right. That's it. Right. I'm still going. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, Ernie's the type of person, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, you've lost your leg. Ah, oh, so what? I've got another one to use. You know, you just. He always has the kind of positive outlook and those are good people to surround yourself with, to be honest. What's his? <sighs> All right, Ant, let's finish up. Last one. The seat, Ant. The Come seat, on, the seat. Let's go. The seat. Yeah. 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 Come on, show me side. That's good, Ant. Oh. Too light. <laughs> Too light. Too light. So we're sitting at 11 weeks out. Well, prep-wise, things are going pretty good. Just, just the whole chest scenario. There is still a chance that it could go away. For now, it's head down, press on, do what I need to do, and get the old tunnel vision on.